Hi, it's Sandy Parker and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. Today I'm going to do a haul from a company called Fancells.com and I hope you'll stay tuned. Well, the first thing I'll tell you is I really like the idea of diamond paintings, but I don't really have wall space for them and I sometimes don't have the attention span to do big projects. So when I looked at this site, they have so many things on there that are not uh, diamond paintings. That was what really inter interested me. So here's the list. They have uh, a container, that, like a, a folder for a boarding pass. They have bookmarks, clocks, greeting cards, lamps, makeup mirrors, notebooks, leather bags, ornaments. Let me go back to leather bags. They have small little uh, coin purses and they have bigger bags. Ornaments, passport cover, photo albums, stickers, and storage boxes. Now storage boxes were, there were a variety. They had um, eyeglass holders and pen cases and um, frames. I think that was in the storage box category. They have so many uh, interesting different things that I really, really loved. And so uh, with that being said, I'll show you the things I got. <clears throat> Now, the first thing I got, Rich thinks this is not really, um, he doesn't think this is use, this is useful for what it was intended because it's a luggage tag and he thinks that the diamonds will come off when they're going through the luggage conveyor belts and they might. So with that being said, I decided I would just figure out something else to do with it. So here's what I did. I cut out some paper scraps. These are just pages of um from like typing paper and some of them i punched neater than others and i used my corner rounder and i also used this little tool and i cut these to wait a minute wrong one i cut the pages to two and one eighth by four and five eighths and then I just rounded the corners. I'm just showing you one so you see if you want to do something like this with maybe something you have that you know how to do it. And round the corners. Then what I did is I took one of my existing ones and then I laid it up to the other one. Oh, I just did something to my light, sorry. I laid it up to the other one and I just drew the circle, not a circle, the oval. And then I use this punch upside down. And because it's um, copy paper, you can do a bunch of these at once. And then you have to do it more than once because it's a little bit longer than my hole punch. So that, my hole punch is getting worn down and it doesn't cut as well as it used to. Darn it. Anyway, so that's how I did those. And then I made my cover from a cardboard box there it is and then i did the same exact system i cut it out and then i just put tear tape around the edges and i covered it with designer paper and i'll show you the designer paper but before i do that i'm not going to take all those off because i need to do this you do need to do the same thing with the hole punch where you lay it underneath and then you just draw your hole. And then we'll just punch this out. And hopefully it lines up with where my other hole is. That's always the tricky part is making sure you get it to line up exactly with the other. I know my hands are shaking today. That's because I'm on um, a puffer for, um, I have bronchitis from this cold that I got. And it just won't go away. And so I had to go to the doctor and the doctor made a, in, an incorrect diagnosis. And then my brother-in-law, who's a physician, gave me the correct diagnosis. But um, the meds were the same. So it wasn't like I had to get different medicines. I always put um, wet glue when I'm doing something like this where you have to line it up. Because if you don't do wet glue and you put this down, on here, this paper that I'm lining this with, you're going to end up with it off kilter and you're going to be really frustrated. But if you put a la layer of wet glue down, it gives you the chance to pick it back up. So let's, hopefully I'm in frame. I 
just going to lay it, hopefully, straight on there. And then you can trim off any, um, like, the edge that's a little, that's not covered by your paper. So you just just going to trim that as gently as possible, so we don't end up with a wonky edge like you know I'm going to have. Because I can see that edge is a little bit off. Okay. And then on this side, needs a little bit more. I forgot to do the wet glue when I did the first side, so I'm sure you can imagine how well it, um, I did. I got a big, big, big problem on that side, so I need to put a little glue on that. First thing we're going to do is we're going to put our face on. Then we're going to put these in so that the I have some that are written on. We want the written ones to be pointing toward the back. Face up, I guess I'll call it. Put all those in. So you see these ones that are written on? Those are the ones I want to have face up. I'm going to pull that. Ooh, get in there. And this is just a notepad for myself, so it's not like, you know, this is some um, important project. It's something I just wanted to try so we could see if, in the end, we like the idea of it. So then I'm just going to pull my watch strap and put it into one of the holes. And so this could be something like if you have a briefcase and you wanted to have a pad of paper or a few pieces of paper that you could access quickly, you could even hang that on the outside of your um, of your briefcase. But it, it will lay flat once it's you know once it's trained a little bit. And if you have anything that peeks out from the edges, that's okay. You can always cut those down, but it's not that big of a deal to just leave them there. Hold on, maybe that's my problem because I didn't. Yeah, that was my problem. I didn't have my watch fob in the right place, my strap. So that's the idea I have for that. You can also use it for a luggage tag. I would only use it for carry-on luggage though because you wouldn't want your all of your hard work to go down the drain. This probably took me maybe a half an hour to do. So it's not a time, you know, it doesn't it's not labor intensive and I really loved it. So let me show you the next thing I bought. The next thing I bought was this it's a 50 page notepad that I'm going to use for a travel journal and while I was on vacation I actually did the front of it and I loved it so when I looked on the fan cell site I found this peacock I'm going to move this out of the way and I'll move this over a little bit there we go I found the peacock and I fell in love with it because it's so colorful and beautiful and I'll show you what you get in your packaging. I think I pulled out the kit on this one. But you always get the little tray, the little pen. The package came like this. It came with a pen and a little piece of wax so that you have everything you need to do a diamond painting. They, you always get all of these. So you, if you do diamond paintings, you're going to acquire a lot of these little pens and a lot of those little wax pieces. Anyway, then you also, this is why I love these kind of projects so much. And that, if you see that little um, waffly piece in the plastic, that's not a problem. That's completely normal. So when you get these, this top cover is really important to keep because as you're doing your painting, you want to make sure that you don't have the other part that you're not working on exposed because you'll get lint in it, dog hair, that your um, 
things from your sleeves. So you really want to be careful about keeping this plastic on. And if you lose your plastic or you rip it too badly, you can always put parchment paper on there. But the thing that's cool about these projects that are small like this one is I just take this kind of box and I don't know if you can see it I numbered it 1 through 10 because the projects I was working on had 10 different kinds of beads and each one of these is numbered see there's a all right can you see it 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 let me get to the back there are 9 and then this is the 10th um, so what I would do is instead of putting these in any kind of storage container because it doesn't make sense to put it put these in the little bottles that you're going to keep for later because you're not going to have a ton left over but what I'll do is I would cut them like this and then I'll snip the corner off when I go to use these and then I just I put I lay them in their uh, individual numbers like this is two so I put it in the two and then I go from there that will really help you in the long run because if you're doing this you want to stay organized because if you always are digging around for where's my number 10 or where's my number four or whatever you're just going to get frustrated so I think an organization system like this is great if you're doing diamond paintings I recommend you getting a different storage system and I currently have two unfortunately because I wasn't exactly sure when I started exactly what to do because I wasn't sure if I would love it or not. Um, one of the things I did which was the big um, ocean front of my nephew and his bride they had so many extras of this color I had to put them in a Tic Tac container. But um, this is the first plan I had and these are this was the little snowman I did at Christmas time and these I know that they are also um, affiliated with the embroidery codes which is what this is but I didn't put the embroidery codes on it I put the numbers that they assigned to them see the 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 actually I put these codes the ones that are on the diamond painting the 4 the 9 the 7 the six, the three, those are what the codes are on the diamond painting. I'll hold this up so you can see that. I'm just going to show you the bigger number letters. See the C and then there's a seven. Can you see that? Hopefully. I don't know if you're getting glare or not, but this is what you use to look in this. These are C's. See the C on the back? And then you just stick it out where the C's are. On these, these codes correspond to embroidery floss and it also is a way to make all of your um, diamonds that you have left over it's a way to put them all in the same container but if you have squares which these are and another one comes in and they're rounds you can't put them together so you need more storage so that was why I had to kind of upgrade to this next set of storage and it still wasn't enough because this is what I used for my nephew's big diamond painting it was huge and so these are what I have left over from that they're all squares and those these codes are the numbers that correspond the 902 is the number that corresponds to embroidery floss so if you are one of those people that wants to make sure that you keep track of the numbers that you have so that you can combine later that would come in handy but as I said mine are squares and the projects I'm working on now are all round so though they don't work hand in hand they have to, you have to have separate storage so that's my storage I have right now and this is how I handle uh, using the small when you have a small number of beads diamonds that's how I store them while I'm doing it when I'm done back to this box when I'm done if I had enough left over I would fill up these last two um, cubes and these are nice when you're doing this if you put the code 
like again, let's say you put the code that's on the peacock. So let's say it's number four. If you put a number four on there, then you'll be able to easily go to this, pop it open, dump some of those into your tray and shake it to get them to be um, flat. If you do that and then you find some are stuck together, like glued together, what you can do is put another tray on top and go like this and wiggle them and that'll, that'll break them apart. So that's a little technique for you. But when you first start a diamond painting and there's a lot of different diamonds, and I'll show you that when we get to the diamond paintings, you need to decant them into these kind of covered containers because it will make your life so much simpler. If you don't, you're going to be digging through 35 to 40 bags of diamonds every time to figure out where is number 17? And that would make me absolutely crazy, just so you know. So that was the peacock. And I'll give you links below to all of these things that I got. Now, Fancel did send me things. And I really, really appreciate that. They're very kind people. And this is one of the things they sent me. This is also something I'm going to repurpose. Oh, this one's good because you can see the kit. This is a passport cover. Oops, upside down, I think. Yeah. It's a passport cover. And if you notice, on the spine, they don't have any diamonds, which is really convenient. And then on the, you can see the numbers on all of them. And then they correspond to these. And they're really, really pretty. Um, they're, these ones are considered... Uh, rhinestones as are the ones on this and are the ones on this. So if you're looking for a diamond painting that has this kind of look, the shimmery, really vibrant look, this was this you need to look for the word rhinestone in the title. If you're just doing a regular diamond painting, it won't say rhinestone in the title. That's the way you figure out the difference. So in this set you have the things, the beads that you need. Then you get the kit. As I told you, you always get wax. You always get the tray. You always get the pink pen. You can see the way I'm going with this. You get a lot of trays and a lot of pens. And then this case is leather. This is a passport cover, as I said. If you've ever gone through customs or the TSA agents in an airport, the first thing they say to you is get that passport out of that cover. So I used to keep my passport in a cover. I don't anymore because it's just too big of a hassle pulling it in and out every time I have to use it. So I don't, I don't do that. But anyway, what I thought I would do with this is I thought I would buy notebooks or notepads that fit in here and then use this for a travel journal as well because I thought it was really pretty. It's, it'll be really pretty when it's done. Don't worry, I'm going to do another video when I'm done with this. You always want to keep your kit together until you start working on it and have decanted your beads because if you don't, you're going to get really confused about what went with which project. So then I bought, no, Fancel sent me. They sent me, this one is really, it's really a beautiful image, but you can't really see what it is. It's, uh, it's called the Tree of Life, I'm pretty sure. And it's a 30 by 40 centimeter size, which in this case, it's a little bit smaller than what you normally get in a 30 by 40, just from the way it's made. It's about nine and three quarters by... almost 14 inches. And the direction it goes is this way and it has this is what I was telling you about why you need to decant them this one has can you see this this drill table drill is what they call diamonds this drill table tells you there are 22 different colors so or 22 different yeah colors of the diamonds in this painting so you need 22 little teeny tiny containers with lids to put all these in some will, you'll have more of some and less of others, but you really need to do that because these little baggies get really frustrating really fast. I'm just warning you. You'll lose your mind if you don't do that. There's, there's a difference between um, some drills are round. That's what these are. Some are square, and that's what the one was in that big painting I did of my nephew and his bride. The round ones 
seem to leave a little bit of the background showing. So if you don't like that look, then I would recommend you getting square drills. Square drills are kind of easier to line up, but I personally have never been good at that yet. But um, Sherry, my friend that's really good at diamond painting, said that the one that I did with that snowman and my nephew, that the the drills, the diamonds, were not the same size, and that threw me off. Uh, unfortunately, that, that can happen where you get those problems. So again, it comes with the tray, the pen, and the little piece of uh, wax. When you do a diamond painting, they always send you a few extra baggies because I think they assume that you might rip your baggies and need to replace them because they're probably assuming that people leave them in their baggies. Well, I'm not going to take this apart. It's a cellophane bag. It's about this long and it has a seal at the top. So that always comes in your kit. And this one what I did the Mother Mary that I'll have, I'll put the picture of Mother Mary here. Um, that took me maybe 16 hours to do, which I didn't think was a lot. And it's, it was a 30 by 40 size as well. And I'll make sure I put you the picture up so you see it. And I did not get that one from Fancel. But this one, uh, the lovely people at Fancel did send me. Again, you get the tray, you get the wax, you get the pen. It would be nice if you could opt out of that, if there would be a check mark that you could opt out. But I think companies just find it easier to just include it. But, you know, it's one of those things. I got this for my nephew's bride. It says, because someone we love is in heaven, there's a little bit of heaven in our home. And it has a beach feel to it. Can you see that? There's a little beach at the bottom and um, they live close to the shore and I know they're really into beach. So I thought I would do this for her and this one I think is a 30 by 30. Doesn't say it, but I think it is. Let me tell you the, the real size, not the real size, the uh, inches measurement. It is about nine and a half and I think it's square. Yeah, it's square. And this one should not take me very long to do. And the reason it should not is because it, it has a lot of consistency in colors. So let's say that you have this big of a section that's all a U, then you can quickly go through those. And these are rounds as well. And the colors in here are really beautiful. The, you know, they're very beach looking and this will also look really nice with their the picture that I did of them at the beach because there's a lot of these blues in, in it too. So those are the diamond paintings that I got from Fancel and um, the miscellaneous things that I'm going to be using for myself. I really want to thank the people at Fancel for working with me and sending me these products and I hope that all of you enjoyed seeing something that is a little bit different. As I said, I don't have the wall space for diamond paintings, but love the idea of doing something that is really zen-like. I feel really relaxed when I do this. I feel like I'm accomplishing something and it doesn't, it's kind of mindless, but it really makes you feel like you're making progress with it every time you do some and I can't recommend this enough. I know people say it's really it's really fiddly, it's really um it's th the things are too small. Don't worry about any of that. If I can do it, you can do it. Maybe you start with something super small like this luggage tag or uh, one of these um notebook covers. I think you'll really really enjoy it. I no, I don't normally gush about things, but this has really been something that has been, um, I don't know, I, I can't, I'm not going to say it's a life changer, but it's really given me something that relaxes me, and I am a really high-strung individual, so this really helps me with that. So I hope that you enjoyed this video, that I gave you some ideas of maybe what you could try if you're interested in diamond painting, and that you go to the fancells.com website and check out their great, great range of products, and that you give this a thumbs up and subscribe. Please tell your friends about me on social media because you know I love that. And thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.